Welcome back to the Art of Lancashire. So this is Smile by Uncle Cracker. Written by my Written. illegitimate son. Written by your yeah. illegitimate son. Wow. Wow. And uh, now... Uh, play the next one. Play this one. <clears throat> your father, your mom again, and I go, Kenny Chesney. I go, I go it's a hit song by Kenny Chesney. Written by my illegitimate son. What is his name? Uh, J.T. X is what he goes by. Oh, JTX, really? yeah. So yeah. he's a major songwriter. Huge. <laughs> and um, what is money in that, man? Keith Urban and um, um, uh, I'm sure he's listening. Uh, he'll have to call up and uh, you know, and and he'll say, "Oh, Dad, I had partners," and or Jay, I had partners, or whatever the deal is. But when uh, when he called the biological mom, he said, "Gee, you know, who who is my who is my father?" She said, "Well, I can't. I, he doesn't want you to know." Right. And uh, he had... Uh, Legally, you had signed something saying, I don't want... The, oh, I, no, I, I it was be... done so long ago. Yeah, right, it was right. and, and, you know, I felt awful when we did it. It was not fun. It but was think about awful. him. Think about what are the chances that his father is not some bum near the well. Right. You know, and, and it turns out he's you, his father. Well, he was, and then what I are was... the chances your kid is not some kid, like, with no teeth? Well, I would, we wouldn't a... have been friends. <laughs> And he said that to me once, and I knew he was my son. He said, you know, if you hadn't have been who you are, right, he felt the same I would way. have no interest. <laughs> so I'm, being in, honest. I'm in L.A., and my picture's everywhere from the radio, really? and I was on all the TV shows, and he didn't like that, you know, top, I don't know, he didn't, whatever. I was playing dance music, right? Yeah. He had come to a movie opening once, and they'd put me in this cherry picker, and I'm announcing and making jokes, and he and his friends came and heckled me. That's hilarious. Didn't know who I was. I mean, 34 years ago. So, I mean, uh, who didn't watch Cheers? You were a major part of that show. He's probably yeah. watching that. No, you know? it was like, um, um, uh, this is in the mid in the mid 90s. Uh, like, yeah, no, gee, like, no, yeah, like 90. Years. No, like 90. No, no, no. He lived with somebody else for many years. Oh, right, right. Right, right. In the 90s is when he found me. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Right, yeah, he was, you know. But in the 80s is my point. When Cheers was on, he was probably watching He watched it all kid. the time. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. The whole deal. Right. So, um, so she says to him, I can't tell you who he is, but I will tell you he's not like us. <laughs> and he thinks he's a midget, he's gay, he's, you know, doesn't have an arm, he's not like us, you know, uh, you know, he's Oscar Pistorius, whatever he is. Uh, so, so she, she says, blah, 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 he keeps bugging her, he's sitting with his brother, and, and, he, and he says, she says, well, all right, I'll just tell you, he's an actor. Now, for my son to hear that, who right. wants to be in show business, right. he's, who, well, has he been on any shows I would know? And she goes, oh, please, I can't tell you. And finally, she blurts out, I'll tell you, he's been on Cheers. <laughs> and my son covers the phone and says to his brother, my dad's Ted Danson. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, no, no, it's Jay Thomas. Right. And he's, he goes, oh, my God. Oh my God! <laughs> Not that that my face is on all the buses, you and know. You got, and you got killed in the most funniest of ways. Oh, run on over show. by the Zamboni. You got machine. run over by a Zamboni. Right? Yeah, and uh, what does it go? A mile an hour? <laughs> That's how old I was. But you were a major part of that. Well, here's the deal. I, I was on the radio, and people would call up, and they would make fun of the character of Rhea Perlman. Right. And I kissed her, and I was in love with her, and you know, I did it, and they would say stuff, and so. I was doing my morning show shock jock thing, and I made fun of everyone. Right, right. Then I'd go to the set, and I'd be, you know, the character. Yeah. Well, people would say to Rhea, hey, you know, he's on there this morning saying he has to have combat pay to kiss you. <laughs> oh my your God. Your stubble rubs together, and, <laughs> and, and I'm telling jokes, right? I'm yeah. I'm doing that. And so apparently... You know, she's married to Danny DeVito. Oh, it was a all bad. powerful guy. It was all bad. A powerful bad. Guy. All bad. And um, so... Um, uh, one day I get a phone call and they go, listen, uh, and I knew it was between me and um, um, one other actress to, um, to be picked up as a full time. And uh, the guy says, are you sitting down? I go, yeah, 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 I'm sitting down. He goes, well, we'd have to like not have you back on. This year. Oh, I was gonna say, why did they kill you so cruelly? Oh, well, yes, and, and, wise, and I go, oh that. wow. He goes, and he says, and it's not because of Rhea. And I go, it is, of course, as soon as he says that, right? It's not because of real promo. And so, you know, she didn't like it and um, probably didn't want to be married or whatever. So it's silent for like <laughs> yeah. 10, 15 seconds, you know, and I go, well, you know, thank you and all the other crap you say when you're losing right. your job. Right. And then the guy says, <laughs> do you want to know how we're going to do it? <laughs> and I go, yeah, he goes, well, you're going to be with, you're going to be such an old beat up hockey player, you're with the the penguins the 
Pittsburgh, but, but, but you're a penguin in the ice capades. Right. You were a Pittsburgh <laughs> penguin, and you're so beat up. That, that a Zamboni machine is going to run over you, <laughs> and we're going to yeah. bury you with your beak sticking out of the coffin. Yeah, I can tell there was anger. And we can, we're going to find out you're a bigamist. <laughs> and I said, well, when you kill off a character, you guys, you, yeah, they made sure I could never come back. Wow. Wow. I know. wow. wow. So, and then talk about a hit show, my God. And you were there right in the prime. I it. had it in the palm of my hand. Yeah. What, what is your, your sitcom resume is pretty extensive. Are you then right? I went to Murphy Brown. That's right. But when I originally read for Murphy Brown, I go in and the producer guy is there and I hadn't seen him in a long time or he was in New York and I went, oh, hey, Barton, how you doing? You been sick or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and they all looked at him, you know, and he was really skinny. Right. And, and I started asking him if he was sick and the script said the guy was sarcastic, so I'm being sarcastic, and I start insulting everybody in the right, room. you're playing the character. They call my agent and goes, you know, this guy's an idiot. Never have him come back. <laughs> and the whole time you're on the radio, though, right? All I the mean, same yeah, deal, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So five years passes, and they want to have a real jerk on the show that's a right-wing kind of a jerk. And they have auditions, and somebody says, why don't we get that guy that came in five years ago, that Jay oh, Thomas? Okay. <laughs> so the dead. agent calls, and I go, well, they must have forgotten How bad. what happened. So I go, and I'm really polite. I read the little script, and they go, what are you doing? What are you doing? Look, there's Barnett over there. He's telling me he looks dead. Tell him whatever. And I did the whole thing again, and I got Jerry Gold. And you got the part. Yeah, right? yeah. So, I mean, another huge show. I mean, you know. You Unbelievable. Don't, you don't waste your time with that. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't fool around. Now, did you, you were on the radio the entire time you were on that Murphy Brown? Then I had my own show a couple of times on ABC. Yeah, I had right. a show. I had Tommy Love and War. I had, I did, I did everything. I've had every chance a human being can have in radio, in television, right. in the movies, <laughs> in the movies. I have been in every huge meeting, You, you, and, and I have somehow managed to be mediocre. <laughs> you're not mediocre. I am you're mediocre. great, but no, I mean, you know, it's no, a, I'm I mean, not you're mediocre. not Ted Danson. No, medi that's right. I'm not Howard. I'm not Ted Danson. I'm none of the people I think I ought to be. You're doing fine. Well, you really? Got a kid, you, got you know, a kid. you sound like a parent. You got a talented kid. You got a talented kid. That's all that matters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let him make the money. Back after this. The... Welcome back to the Audio Lag Show. The great Jay Thomas is here. He's up doing his show here. And, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I saw that you were born in Texas to an oil man. Yeah, my dad was a, uh, was a petroleum engineer. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, Harry Dryhole Thomas. Is that what they call him? That's Every oil guy him. has to have a nickname. Yeah, like my dad, no matter dry what. Hole Thomas. Yeah, old Dryhole. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mother used to say, oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God, Harry. My mother's from Patterson, Louisiana. Oh my God, you're so damn dumb. <laughs> uh, he would drill an oil well over here, and the guy over here would drill. And he would hit. Oh, no kidding. Oh, it happened all the time. Oh, wow. <coughs> so now how long did you... Okay, you're going to say something. He drilled the deepest hole in the world twice. And you're this Rolex, me. This Rolex watch yeah. was given to him uh, as one of the engineers on the deepest hole. But that's not a good thing because he just never hit oil. He didn't own that one. <laughs> oh, okay. He was like me in real estate. Uh, uh. You know, I would buy expensive houses and I thought, well, I'm going to build one. Right, or, right. And sell it, yeah. you know. And then when he went out on his own... Um, wow, it was uh, rough, and he, um, uh, you know, got money from all over. And it's a risk, you know. You it gotta, was big, and yeah. I can, rem and you know, it was sad. It was like, um, yeah, he didn't hit, didn't, or he hit stuff, and it would go, it would, it would start pumping salt water after, you know, a year or two or whatever. Uh, that's got to be disappointing. Oh, it's awful. Oh man, it's really awful. So now, what do you learn <laughs> from that? Like, take, what do you take away from that? From me, you're also a risk taker too. You go into show business. You learn business. terrible fear, yeah. <laughs> and you learn that you've got some sort of a black cloud over you. Is that what you really think? Your family is totally un, unlucky. Uh, I I'm not think, joking. I, don't I can't so. believe look you asked me that sperm, question. Look what your sperm did. You didn't even think take, take care of it. And the kids writing songs, and you're you're yeah, a big success. Yeah, but he success? lived with somebody else that might, it was a bigger it was a bigger <laughs> success than my dad. Board? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Right. When did you move to New Orleans? At what age? One. Oh, you went right there. Yeah. I mean, uh, my dad was in. Uh, you hit uh, salt water and you moved to New Orleans. <laughs> no, he owned a concrete block factory when he lived in Kermit, Texas. Oh, no kidding. And there are pictures of him making one block at a time like in the driveway and i'm looking at these pictures going how could he possibly it's like the one dollar pizza guy downstairs how do you make 
How do you make money? Any money unless four or five hundred people a day come in for a block of concrete. He didn't understand the concept of mass production. Like... Nothing. No, and I mean it. And, and it says, One you know, block at a time. it says Harry Dryhall Thomas opens, you know, concrete block company, and he's standing in front of it. I mean, I just looked at it. I'm thinking, Dryhall Thomas. I'm thinking, you know, the Kermit Gazette has him, yeah. you know, in there. I'm thinking, man, wait a minute. It, there were no helpers. There was no, like, factory. It was a machine, and he had, like, about 10 blocks behind him. That's hilarious. It was bad. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it sounds bad and fun. Well, now it's funny, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, so so now your kids, you're saying, are uh, going to college now? And... Yeah, yeah. I have, well, J, JT's doing his thing. Then I have the middle boys, the big outdoorsman, and uh, a couple of reality channels want to put him on. He's a mountain lion tracker and a... So how does he learn You said he's to going that? to Cal? Yeah. He's going to go to Berkeley, yeah. Yeah. That's a oh, and he has a I gun on him at all times. How does he clash with you politically? No. That doesn't work in Berkeley, you know. Like, he, people are well, he is raised said, that's, in that's Hollywood. Said, yeah. and he's, my, my wife is a Quaker, and I'm not kidding. It sounds like a joke. Right. And so she's raised, she's a communist, raised as a communist. Yeah. And um, <laughs> now I know about guns, and I hunted and fished all my life, but. I bitch most of the time I was in the boat with my dad and my brothers and all, and they hated my guts and were glad I left. Can you stick around for another segment? Sure. You can't go. We have to take another Yeah, break. my family thought I was Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> you know. On that note, we'll be back with... <laughs> oh, my God. With, with Jay Wethold. I Tom. believe Harry, I think he's a Jew. <laughs> the Artie Lang Show, weeknights on audience, only on DirecTV.